All right, well, we finally got the firewall installed with the battery tray itself installed and our last little patch panel in. Everything is welded up and ground flush with little to no warpage, which is a miracle after all the time that that took to get right. But we're finished and we're time to move on to the final bits, which is drilling the hole for the wire loom, spot welding our little mounting tabs for a little kick panel or something that goes on the uh, footwell. And then that will all be finished except for the mounting of the actual battery tray itself. And for that, I had to buy some parts, which is a perfect segue to go ahead and remind you guys that if you're looking for any parts, please visit dotsandparts.com and search for them. That's dotsandpartswithaz.com. It was really simple. I needed a battery tray. I didn't know who made it, so I went to dotsandparts.com, typed in battery tray, lo and behold, a bunch of companies are now manufacturing these, and I was able to find the best price for what I considered the best part, which was an original stainless steel remanufactured stamped one-piece battery tray. We're going to install that a little bit unique. We're not actually going to weld it in like they had it from the factory. We're going to drill out holes and then we're going to rib nut with stainless rib nuts and stainless steel bolts. That way, if we have to remove this thing in the future, we're not going out and drilling our nice pretty welds. It's just an easy unbolt procedure and then we can get to whatever part we need to work on in the future should anybody ever have to do that. So we're going to get busy on all this and uh, I've had enough fun for one day, so I'm going to do all that tomorrow. So we'll see you guys in the morning. Welcome back to the shop. It is the next morning and we have to put a hole in the firewall right there for the passenger side wire loom to come through is the main wiring harness. We need to have a hole in the original location. So to do that, we just got a hole saw. We cut out the original firewall and we're just going to take that piece and it's pretty much an exact match of the template that we put in when we replace that firewall piece. So all we're going to do is take our old piece, set it up next to it, mark where we need to drill the hole. We're gonna drill it on the back side, inside the passenger compartment with the pilot drill. And then we're gonna come on the front side and finish it out. That way you guys can see what we're doing. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Just drilling a hole. We're gonna go ahead and get busy doing that now. Oh, well, that ain't gonna work. The next thing we got to do is remove these locating tabs. They have a little captive nut on the back side, and it's for a little trim piece that goes on the footwell of the interior panel. We also have these two little wire looms. We're going to do something a little different with this. We'll probably save for a future video. So we're going to go ahead and get these cut off and sack welded in on the new panel. Now what we're gonna do is stick this original panel just like we made this hole, using this as a template. We're gonna match the outer border, match our original hole that we already duplicated, and then we're just gonna come in here and mark these mounting holes. This one's gonna be a little bit hard uh, because of all the rust in the area, but then we're gonna take the interior plastic panel, we're gonna overlay it, and just make sure we have this one in the right location with all these holes marked out where they should be.
is in there. The battery tray is done. The firewall is welded in with the hole in its original size and location for that passenger side wire loom to come through. We went ahead and tacked on those mounting plates for that piece of trim on the interior as well and scuffed everything up and it is ready for another coat of fresh epoxy primer. Once we get to a point during all this up here where we're throwing some paint on it, we'll go ahead and shoot a little bit of extra and recover all that on the inside. Now I went ahead and ordered the stainless steel version of the OEM style battery tray. And typically this would be spot welded into place. And that's not something we're going to recreate because it's a huge pain in the butt when you actually have to fix something underneath the battery tray. You got to go back through and draw out all the spot welds that you made. And that's not something we want to do. Should we ever have to, or should anybody ever have to get in that area again, we want to make it a little bit more accessible than it was when we had to access it. So for that, what we're going to do is using a set of rib nuts it's basically we're going to drill holes we're going to mark this thing out drill some holes in this panel and then we're going to put the rib nuts in place and it's basically a rivet with threads so it will allow us to bolt this thing in place pretty cool way if you ask me and the tools are relatively inexpensive after we get this thing marked out trimmed and massaged in place with all the holes drilled that's going to complete this project so it's been a lot of fun i'm happy to be here and i'm happy to be done with it and moving on to something else so let's get busy doing that and finish this thing up All right, so the Z Car Depot OEM stainless steel battery tray needs a little bit of work. This edge right here, so it would sit in the car like this. This edge being towards the front, this edge being towards the passenger side, and this edge being towards the engine compartment. This one needs to be bent out a little bit, in my case. The, center, the edges of these touch, but the center doesn't, so we're just going to kind of shape this one out a little bit. And then this is probably the one that needs the biggest work, and it's the hardest to bend without messing up this straight piece. So we're going to go over here to the press and try to press this out with a little backer pad. And this needs to be bent down to match the roll of the, the inner fender there. So you don't want to screw the rivet all the way down or as far as it'll go onto the threads. Uh, see this thread sticking through? That, that'd be too tight and it would actually probably strip out the threads of the rib nut or your tool. So what I do is I just run the rib nut down until it's about flush, maybe a little bit less with the end. And that should give you adequate tension and if it doesn't, you can tighten it up more with the back of the tool once you get it set if it's too loose. And then all you do is put it in just like a pop rivet.
All right, we got all the rib nuts in or nut certs, whatever you want to call them. They're all installed. We did actually have to modify our tool. Because I'm not a fan of modifying tools. Tools are meant to be used, not to be uh, modified. But we actually had to cut the handles off so we could get that last one there in the, uh, the last little bin there. A little bit too tight, tool's a little bit too big to fit in there. So we did what we had to do to get the job done. Like I said before, it's time to move on to something else. We've spent enough time messing with this. So the last thing we gotta do is bolt it up, make it look pretty, and then we'll be done. All right, if you can't tell, I couldn't decide which fastener to use. So we have some regular pan Phillips head screws. We have some flange bolts, and then we have just some regular bolts. They're all gonna be used with lock washers, but you gotta help me decide which ones to put on. What do you think would look best? They're all stainless fasteners. You want the Phillips? You want the uh, hex cap? Or do you want the regular bolt? Well, let me know in the comments below. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna bring this portion of this project to a close. If you enjoy this stuff, please click that thumbs up button. If you wanna know what's next, you already know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications, that way you get a message just as soon as we post another video. If you're looking for dots and parts for your project to get it back on the road, visit dotsandparts.com. That's dotsandparts with a Z dot com. They're a huge supporter of the channel. I hope you enjoy the help that they're providing to the Dotson community. If you have any questions, leave a comment below let me know what fastener you would use let me know if we need to leave this thing in stainless or if we need to prep it for paint just like we're about to do the rest of the engine bay at a later date that's not what's next again if you want to know what's next hit that subscribe button as always we appreciate it very much and thank you so very much for watching this video